Hi everyone. On my last DIY video for solar, I showed how to build the stands to hold your panels. This next video, what I'm going to do is give you an overview of all the components that go into a solar. And what I'm going to do is start off by showing you how I housed all of it as a portable and not a permanent install. So you can see I have this shed here. And what I did is use this shed to house all my equipment. I'm not attached to the house at all. And that way I keep this without being a permanent attachment to my residence. So to give you an idea of how this works, first, I have a spot where my cables come in and out of the shed. And so I put an electrical box here and I bring all these in and then I seal it on the inside of the box. And I'll get into this with future videos for greater detail, but this is an overview and all my wiring comes in here. And so the way that the solar system works is you have your wires that come in and those are my PV wires. These are my wires that actually come from the solar panels themselves. I bring them into this box. This box is a solar disconnect. So you can disconnect the power coming in from those panels if you have to change any wiring or completely shut off the system. You wanna have that set up. That way you have a way of shutting power off. From there, those wires come up and come into this first inverter and also come into the second inverter. And this is important because I'm using both inverters as not only a power source, but also a way to charge the batteries. So when you're using two inverters, you can do something called split phase. And what that means is one inverter is powering 120 and the other inverter is powering 120. And they're in alternate phases with each other, therefore providing 240. So just as your house, if you connect to two legs, you can get 240. You can do the same thing with these inverters. So the lines come in, go into these inverters. These inverters and in switch are chargers and they charge my batteries. The way the batteries connect to your inverters is you'll have your hot, your positive, coming off the battery to a bus bar. That bus bar in turn feeds both inverters and there's a fuse between that connection. So if it pulls too many currents or amps, it will blow protecting your system and your hardware. From the fuse, I also have a circuit breaker. Now, this is somewhat redundant, but I did this because I wanted to be able to shut off power anytime I needed to, to work on these inverters or just shut down the system without having to actually unhook my connection to the fuses and the bus bar. So it's, it's almost like a double protection. You could do just the circuits or just the fuses, but again, it's more convenient and it adds more protection by having both. So the positive comes up, feeds this way and that way, and then your negatives come down to this negative bar and the negative bar ties into the negative of the battery. So as these PV wires come in, they're at a disconnect. They come in, put power to the inverters in which those inverters can charge the batteries and the inverters can also put your output power. So the output power comes from hooking and running all the way over to this panel box. And the reason I'm using a panel box instead of running it directly is it makes it more modular for future upgrades, just as it makes it more modular if I ever get more inverters. So these inverters, they come in and they power into this panel and I can disconnect the power from those inverters right here. Now these breakers, are for actual power out. So I'm using this side for power in and this side for power out. So once you have your power to here, 
then you'll see that these lines will run back out to power things that you want to power outside the shed. So in a breakdown of that, you see these are my AC input wires. These are my AC output wires to the panel. And then for my panel, I've got my AC output wires that go out. And so this big cable, for an example, is the one that comes out right here, goes out that way. And you can follow it around and comes to the hot tub. The other cable that's for an output goes out this way and runs to my garage. So this is an overview of how I hooked this whole system up. Now I will have following videos that will break these components down further into how to actually do it, but I wanted to give you a starting reference of everything that will be involved with the system.